once you hit about the age of 65, your mortality from falling uh, becomes really high. Uh, it, it's actually surprising when you look at the population adjusted mortality uh, associated with falls, accidental falls. And um, we talk about it mostly through the lens of, hey, here's all cause mortality that, you know, in the first year post a fall of, and, and that results in a fracture of the hip or femur. Um, one of the things that's happening in the aging person, of course, is their brain is shrinking a little bit and their skull is not. So presumably that's making them more susceptible. Uh, they're going to have more movement of the brain within the head. Is that, is that why we're seeing a greater susceptibility in an aging population? In addition to the fact that they're obviously more susceptible to a fall? I don't know. It's a great theory. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously we see atrophy in that population, et cetera. Um, and the other thing is, there's a lot of unprotected falls in that population. There's a lot of syncopal events in that population. Uh, and there's a lot less motor control when you do fall. And so the mecha the biomechanics are going to be more violent in that population. And also cerebral spinal fluid is not as robust in that population. So you don't have as much mm. protection of the brain moving inside the skull either. So there's a lot of reasons for it. Um, but oh my goodness, is that an understudied area? And boy, is it a huge problem that we see day in, day out in our clinic. I have a definite passion of working with older people that have this injury. And we're doing some of the first research looking at concussion and, and, and geriatric population. And it's a very re rewarding population to work with because you can treat it. It's so exciting to see someone. I just saw a 90-year-old this morning, Peter, that, that fell and they want to get better so bad. They have so much energy. How, how long ago did this person fall? About eight weeks and they're not well. Tell, you know, tell me about the fall. What was, what, was the, what was the fall like? If I remember right, they had a syncopal episode where they hadn't hydrated well, maybe a little stress going on in their life, uh, dysregulated blood flow, you know, dysautonomic stuff. They get up from going to the bathroom, collapse, hit their head on the, on the, on the linoleum floor Hit, f fall forward off the toilet Correct. face first basically facial, okay. facial fracture small subdural bad concussion fortunately no intracranial intervention the the blood from the subdural reabsorbed but they're left with this pretty bad concussion um very very dizzy in bed very very dizzy in life don't like busy environments, feel fatigued all the time, bad headaches they've never had before, a lot of anxiety that they're not even aware of. And of course, they were living alone, they were living alone at the time. And now family members are around. They have to get support from them and they get enabled and they get really protective. They think they're gonna fall again so they don't move as quickly. And of course, the vestibular problem doesn't get treated because they're not moving. They're not doing anything. They're not exercising. They're not going to busy environments. And so the anxiety levels are up. They have benign positional vertigo that no one ever noticed. That's why they're getting really dizzy in bed. We can fix that. Mm. And what, what we get them in the right physical therapy, the right vestibular therapy, the right approach, we get family members on board and tell them how to approach things and get them more active and, and challenge them more and make sure the parents aren't protecting them as much as, as they, you know, overprotecting them and explaining how you treat this problem. And oh my God, they do really well. It's, it's amazing. It's very, very rewarding to treat a patient like that. And we'll get that person better and they'll be, they'll look great here in another few weeks, hopefully. And again, they, this, this person will be doing how much exercise as a part of their rehabilitation program? Walking for now. Um, you know, they're not a fall risk. We looked at them, see our vestibular therapist, they're not a fall risk, which is good. So we gave them some balance exercise to work on. We give them some vestibular exercise to work on. Tell them to go to grocery stores. Don't carry, don't hold on to the buggy, you know, walking up and down the aisles, challenging themselves, going out to busy restaurants, going back to church, you know, explaining to family members how to approach all that stuff. It's really cool to see this stuff wash off the patient when in fact they, they are helpless. They don't think they're ever going to get better. They think their life's over, like literally. And they think it's the beginning of something, the beginning of the end, you know? Mm -hmm.